So we're here with Peter Connolly, the Secretary of the Amateur Football League. Thanks very much for your time today. And what we're trying to do is, uh, what we'd like to do is just, you're working every day on, on, on here, but just give us a sense of the work that goes into providing over 35 football. That's a fucking disaster. That's a lot of questions. <laughs> that is, really? That's a lot of questions. Right, where do we start? Right, realistically, we organise over 25 football, right? We have the division managers create the fixtures. <coughs> I get the fixtures and I assign referees to them and I put them up on the website. All right? Referees have their own little allocation page. So if clubs even want to look at that too, they can see who the referee is without having to trawl through all the fixtures. So you can actually see what the referees see. So that's pretty good. Uh, then, of course, there's the usual changes on a routine basis, on a regular basis. Clubs either switching their day, switching their time, and then that leads to referees having to be switched or changed and changes in that, right? It's challenging, but we get there. We get matches played. We, we, the goods are for the odd match, right? To be played. So we have to find referees for some of them. We have to double up on, or we have to put three officials on, especially the Premiership games, which is a good standard of football. And we try our best to get uh, three referees in those games, right? Now we've gone past the summer months and the other leagues are coming back into action. Our referees are going back to their leagues, so the chances are we're going to run into difficulties getting referees for games, right? Uh, a lot of the clubs then, also who switch to Friday night, will be switching back to Saturday because they don't have lights on their pitches. They have no uh, lights on pitches, so the light is going. I think we'll get away with Friday night games up to the last week in August, if we're lucky, and um, that will be the last week, we'll be probably kicking off a quarter to seven, I'd say. And after that, we're back to Saturday. So we are. Now we have some clubs that are switching their games to Thursday because they have lights, and they're because they have senior squads to play on Friday night, so mm -hmm. Thursday's right. In other words, we get our games covered, we get them played. And in terms of the, I see you have two divisions in the, in the, in the even if four divisions, they're going to have a 3A and a 3B in the north side, is yeah. that right? And is that going to be four The reason why we, we went 3A and 3B uh, this season was, it uh, was a case that all these teams wanted to be division 3, right? Oh, right. And okay. they want to be down to that level. We made it to 3A and 3B and it's, there's a lot of teams in it. Yeah. In fairness, we would have loved to just have just have ten teams in a division, but we had to because there would have been only six in the division then if we yeah. went down to it. Wouldn't be good. So this season we went with that. Next season it could change again because uh, we might get more teams, more new teams. We tend to put new teams in a lower division unless they we will ask them and say, listen, what's your what's your kind of standard like? A lot of over 25 standard football is pretty, uh, just they're, they've got a team together, they've got enough of bodies together to have a team and they just want to enjoy a game of football. We try them out in the lower divisions, if they, if obviously if they're too good, we look at them, obviously you need to go up to mm -hmm. a higher division. We always get the question at the start of the season, oh we lost a few players this season, we want to go down. This season coming, the new season, there'll be none of that. Right, we would be we, we're putting we're strictly enforcing the relegation and promotion from each division, and that's what we do. We will observe it. I have a, we have a few queries from clubs that want to enter next season already, mm -hmm. which is great great to see. Over twenty five football is the way to go at the moment, but we will lose some clubs. We lost some clubs this season already. They had to pull out because their players didn't give a. Yeah, it is difficult. Well, it's, no, it, it's difficult for clubs. You see, difficult. what people yeah. forget is we were, I was a secretary of a club, right? Mm -hmm. And I know what, what happens in clubs and how they, how they work. And I think it's not, people out there don't think we know this, right? But every club, yes, they're different. They run things differently. Managers run things differently. It's amazing about managers. I, you know, if you want to keep players in your club, and I say this to every club out there, right? If you want to keep players in your club, you have a list of 18 players on a day. Now, the last thing you're going to do in over 25 football is leave two guys and not give them a game on the day. 
right? Play them. Get them interested because there will be a time will come when you might need them because guys are gone on holidays or guys got injured and then you ring them up and will you come out this week and then they'll tell you, back off, you know. Don't well, I mean, it, you know? at, at over at over thirty fives, you really have to have a big squad and yes, then shoot you your eighteens. I mean, correct. with especially with summer football and so many things, even the the bank holidays, for example, must cost you, you know, a few headaches. This season, right? This season of bank holidays, what people forget that clubs out there need to use their loaf a little bit, right? Okay, we this year we because there's nine bank holidays in a year, right? So that's two months without football. So that was a disaster for the last few years, really. Now this year we said, no bank holidays. Well, we gave two off. We gave Easter and we gave Paddy's weekend off. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, after that, if you're coming up to a bank holiday weekend and you know you want that weekend off, talk to your opposition, talk to your division manager and play it on a Wednesday beforehand, especially when you have light, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. That, and then you can have your bank holiday weekend off. Yeah. No, people don't think, you know, people, clubs need to think about that. And not last minute either, dot com, switching <laughs> games, uh, you know, are, and we see this a lot. We yeah. see clubs talking to each other, switching a match, and don't bother even informing the division manager. Yeah. That's ridiculous, right? It's important to talk to your division manager, is it okay to do this? And just don't think you can do it yourself, right? Yeah. Because there's too many knock ons. Referees need to be appointed. I'm going to have to go find another referee or pluck one out of the sky somewhere, you know. It's kind of like that. But, no, it's, it's listen, football is enjoyable. It's enjoyable for everybody. It's, it can be enjoyable for us too at times. Although you think the fucking stress can be fucking hard when you're trying to do a day job and you have five or six people, secretaries yeah. trying to ring you for this, that and the other. Something yeah. frivolous that an email or a text will do and I get back to you. I'll yeah. always get back to people, you yeah. know. But if I'm working, fine. I'd, what comes first? Well, it's incredible. It, it is incredible the amount of work it, and it, that it takes in order to put it. I mean, when when I talk to people in the over thirty fives, a lot of them that have come back into football, they never really realize they might not even played since they were kids, and they're playing and they realize, my God, there's referees, there's nets, there's decent pitches. I mean, yeah, they, people, there's a lot goes into it, like and, and like the expense for a club alone just to put a team out there. Yeah. Just think about, you have your public liability insurance, right? Which is very important to have. If you don't have that, you won't be playing our league anyway, because it's one of the stipulations, you have to have it, right? You, you have the nets, you have to mark the pitch, you hire the pitch. You might be paying exorbitant prices with South Dublin County Council, or you might, be, you might have a, a little bit more lenient price with Dublin Corporation, mm -hmm. you know? But it varies, it does vary a lot. You have, as I said, mark the pitch, someone to mark the pitch. You might not put up the nets, take down the nets, you know. A yeah. lot of clubs over 25s out there have one guy just looking after the lot. And we do tell, we do tell these clubs, listen, you need to get people involved with you. Get them on board because chances are, something happens to you, the club will die. No, they, no one will pick it up, you know. You need someone to give you a hand. Like, on, after a match day, no, we see it with 35s, they think they're prima donnas, but they go out there on a match, they play their game, no matter what division you're in, it doesn't have to be in the top level or lower level, they'll come in after, throw the jersey in the middle of the floor, go off to the pub and someone else to pick up, leave it someone else to pick up the gear, bring it to the laundry, get it washed, take down the nets, and next thing you know, Johnny will come into the pub, jeez, what kept you? you know, kind of <laughs> so, that happens a lot. Right. Yeah. Some other clubs are more organised. That's fine. They have three or four guys. Give them a hand. You know. But people forget that. You know. Yeah. 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 It is. No, but people do forget. That's people true. do forget. You know. And that this guy has a life too, rather than. But Peter, before we finish, I just want to ask one more question in terms of the growth. You you, you said uh, over thirty fives is where it's at. Yeah. Tell me what you mean by that. What I mean by that, it's growing all the time. It is growing all the time. I and mean, obviously. The age profile of junior players is increasing all the time. If you ask clubs out there, clubs have often, often said to me, you know, oh, we're not there yet, right? We're, in, we're just inquiring, but we're not there yet. Having enough of players, or we thought we had, and then, but they went somewhere else, you know? So that happens a lot. Football is too, I think it's, it's not uh, like the GEA, it's not parochial. You have too many clubs within a, 
in a particular area and they're all fighting for the same piece of pie. Yeah, yeah. It's sponsorship, the whole world. Sponsorship is very hard to get, right? Even us as a league, James we could get more sponsorship, happy days, you know? But listen, it is what it is. The clubs are in the same boat. Some clubs are very lucky to have sponsors and other clubs don't have sponsors. And how they manage to might have a, a quiz night or something like that to generate funds. But obviously something something the likes of uh, what you're doing on Striker Online, that could be beneficial to clubs. How they can generate sponsorship. So a lot of them don't know or you know, don't wouldn't know where to start, you know, to go out and uh, uh, get some sponsorship in. And if obviously something like if something like this was a benefit, great. Happy days. Yeah. It's all dependent for football. That's what we're here for. It is. People <laughs> playing football, get out there kicking a the ball on a Friday and Saturday, going back to the pub, having a few pints and ten or a few oranges, sorry, seven ups maybe, and just having the a bit of banter. Yeah. That's what it's all about. That's it. The banter and you know what we what we're we know what's gonna happen with with Strike Ground Line as the as the content increases is that um, these these players who are playing in the, the twilight of their careers, let's say, you know, by by creating content, and you know, it doesn't have to be game content. I mean, I'm talking to someone at the moment who wants to put up a kind of a prize for, um, you know, best penalty or free kick. And the reason that I've suggested the best penalty or free kick is because why? Because we all know when the free kick is happening, you know. So it just takes one guy to come out with the with the phone and just record it which means that it could be sent in and again that can be sponsored and it can be a prize and people can have the crack around the pastime, the thing that they do and that's what we're trying to do and the over 35s, the uh, Amateur Football League is a perfect example of having the bit of crack and immortalising that game and if we can learn to immortalise the game that we play then companies and sponsors will get on board and back us because immortalising it means having it online forever. And if we do that, then that means that they have the content that they can back. Excellent. But like, as we say about football, there is a lot of people out there playing the game, have a lot of history, have a lot of good stories, <coughs> have come a long way. Like this league itself, our own league is here a hell of a long time. Since 19, uh, it was originated in 1954. Well, tell us a bit more about that. Oh Jesus, so you're asking me. Um, well, it, it was created in 1954 and um, it was at Richmond Park, Richmond Road, right? And from then it uh, progressed. Like we, we were in junior football, we were probably one of the most progressive football, football leagues to go forward with under 19s. First one to have an under 19 division, then first one to have over 35s. And then the device of football in general, like the way things we had junior and then our junior clubs decided they wanted to go somewhere else, so that's fine. But we had over 35 football and it's progressed since then and we're happy with that, you know. Brilliant. Well, thanks very much, Peter. It's a very well, it's from all the, if the we've, it's one of the best examples of um, an affiliate that we've seen in terms of the way it's structured on the, on the website it's very clear and it's very the, the results are all up. we look forward to working with you and, and getting these stories that you talk about and elevating the AFL and the over the, the, the players and the clubs buy into this and, yeah. and just listen get your club out there because there's a lot of history out there in these clubs as well you know oh, yeah. and just get it out there and get it on online or whatever a video and get your stories there and there's a lot of good men a lot of good men that have been in football a long time you know and, and I say it there's a few like there's Paddy Dwyer and OLV head of a long time a great stalwart to the game just as an example I'm yeah. not going to I don't want to be picking on clubs. All no, no, clubs no, yeah, yeah, they yeah. all have their own little men who are involved in this, started off and are still involved. You yeah. know? And I think that's very important. Yeah, absolutely. You know? absolutely. And they, they need to be recognised. There's yeah. a lot of people involved in football these days don't get recognised enough by the main association. Right? They yeah. don't. Because they're, the grassroots people are out there. And I'm talking about all over the country. Oh, yeah. But in, not just in Leinster not just in Dublin, all over the country there's good men like this and they've been doing this for donkey's years without a iota, you know. So let's get out there and get them home safe. Great. Thanks very much Peter, appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. But then again